hey, I'm not dead. Hello, today I will be doing a review of the Tin Drum by Knee High Face Company, which I saw literal weeks ago. I've been planning on doing this since I saw it and I forgot. No, I didn't. I just procrastinated it. But I have now GCSE drama homework based on it. So I thought, while I do my homework, we can talk about it because that isn't that productivity two in one? No, I don't know. One thing I need to mention before I, um, before I start is that I didn't know we weren't allowed to take notes until halfway through Act 2. No one told me, so I have a book of notes here. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I stopped when they told me to, but I had no idea, so I, I have notes here. I don't have a programme to work from, slightly salty about that, because whenever I go to the theatre, I always buy a programme, but because I was with school, I couldn't, and we were nearly late for the show, so I'm kind of glad we didn't, because I would have we missed it, but yeah. I'm going to go through my homework, because I've basically got to just write a load of stuff about this play, and we can talk about it. So, the first part is, before you see the show, and it's just stuff like, when did you go see it, blah blah blah, and then background information here, I saw it at West Yorkshire Playhouse on the opening matinee. Opening matinee? That's weird, but yeah. On the 19th of October, and it is based on an, a book from 1959 by some author that I can't say the name of. Um, yeah, cool. I have apparently written, before I saw the performance, I expect it to be stylized and possibly a more modern style with older context. Who knows, this was weeks ago. This is the kind of play that I wouldn't have expected to like, but I really did. Like, I was obviously trying to go into it with, like, open, open eyes. That's not a phrase. I was trying not to judge because it was, like, you know, drama GCSE. And I was like, you never know, I might be surprised. And it was kind of the same with Jane Eyre. I did a review on that. Link is in the description. It was very stylized, and I didn't expect to like it, but I really did enjoy it. I'm one of those people that doesn't like, like, modern art. So that kind of thing kind of bothers me, or used to, but this was really, really fun. It wasn't fun, it was a bit depressing, but it was good. One of the things that really stood out to me was the fact that the play started at the end. So, like, the set was all set up. <laughs> set up. It was the same for, like, the majority of the play, except they had this one chandelier that was, like, laying on the floor in the middle of the stage, and these cards that were, like, spread out. And me and the skull that was sat next to me, there was, like, they came on stage, and they started, like, picking up stuff, and we were looking at each other, and we were like, are they acting or what? Because obviously the audience was still talking, and they hadn't turned the lights off. And there was no, like, announcement or anything, so we were like, are they actually acting? And we were like, I think they're acting. So they came on stage, like, beforehand and were, like, picking up these cards and reading them. And I can't remember how this happened, but they somehow disappeared. I can't remember. Maybe they just picked them all up. I can't remember. And the chandelier went up, and then at the end it came down and the cards went all over again. So it was really cool how they did that, and I really liked that. I'm not going to give you a synopsis of the play, because honestly, this is one criticism I have, and I'm not sure whether this is about the play or the book, because I didn't really understand the plot. Like, I, and again, I don't, I'm not sure if this is actually down to the play or not. I think it might be more to do with the book because they followed the plot of the book. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm actually going to read the book at some point, hopefully, anyway. Um, and I'm hoping if I read that, it would give me a better grasp of what was going on because I felt like the actual story, like half of the play was like explaining this child Oscar, who's the main character's backstory, and like his parents. So it was kind of like... There wasn't much of a story in my book, but I don't, again, I don't think that's down to the play. I do think they interpreted it, like, really interestingly and stuff. And it was, it wasn't like it was hard to follow, it was just, there didn't seem to be much that happened. And I think that's my main criticism of it, but again, it's not, I don't think it's down to the fact that they did it badly at all. I think it's because of the, the subject matter, and I think in, in a play, and I think it was, was it, I think it was two hours and five minutes, it was a really long play as it is, but in a play with, I presume this book is like massively thick, I, I don't know, but I presume it is. I don't know how you can condense that plot into that. Um, so I think they did a really good job of that, and it was interesting. And I do think that the, the, the moral of it, whether like that's kind of up, up to interpretation, but like what they th what you think the story's about, because it's, it's about this boy with a tin drum, I think that's completely like up to your own interpretation, but they did that well, and I think that's the aspect they were going for, if you hear what I mean. So like, they weren't so much focused on the plot as they were like the symbolism of it all, which was cool, because again, I wouldn't normally like that kind of thing, but the way they did it was really good. I have no actor names, um, I, ri I literally wrote, like it says, um, like, who are the actors? What else have they been in? in? On the website, I looked and it just said ensemble, so I can't really mention any particular, like, actors in their roles, um, because I don't know who's who and I couldn't be bothered to go through it and Google all their names and work out which was which. 
sorry. The narrator, I don't know, like, did he have a name? I don't know. He was really good. He was like, just, I, firstly, how on earth is he not, has he not lost his voice? Because obviously the play's finished now at West Yorkshire Playhouse anyway. How on earth? is he gonna keep his voice because he was doing all this like shouting and like there was a lot of singing involved in music and they had a band on stage kind of like Jane Eyre. You need to really go watch that because otherwise you'll be a bit confused by these references. He was doing like a lot of shouting and like sound effects with his voice like not singing but like like I don't know how to explain it but like background noises and stuff adding to the atmosphere uh, and he did a really good job of that he was really really good. Um, just generally, everyone was good. I think there was about 10 people, 10, 12-ish. So quite a small cast, and they did a lot of multi-rolling as well. Same same as Jane Eyre. I, I'm drawing parallels here, can you tell? Sorry about the weird transition. Um, my camera battery died and I had to charge it. I was talking about multi-rolling and how um, the main cast stayed in roles, um, whereas I think generally in Jane Eyre, the only character that really stayed in role the whole way through was Jane. Um, because the story kind of moves along like through a larger like time period if you get what I mean whereas this like yes there was the um the backstory of the parents and like their kind of lives I guess but they were still central figures in the, the present day uh with Oscar so there was no need for them to change that and also Oscar was still present during the retelling of his like parents backstory so he was stood there on the steps like watching which was a bit creepy i don't think i actually mentioned oscar was played by a puppet have i not yeah i haven't mentioned this yet i'm how did i miss that so oscar was controlled by someone hold it like a, as a puppet and it was like this really small creepy bald thing it was a bit weird i'll put a picture in here it was it was quite creepy and i think that was what they were going for <laughs> because it was just, it was a bit weird. I, I liked that. It was a bit unnerving, but you sort of got to the point where you forgot that it wasn't a puppet, which was weird, I have to say. Because thinking about this now, I'm like, that's really, really, really odd. The fact that I literally forgot that this was a puppet. It was that, it wasn't realistic as such, because it didn't look like a human, really. The whole plot is like, this boy that can't grow, I don't know. So it was like really small, but yeah, it, it was a bit weird, unnerving. If you wanted unnerving, they did it well. I'm now going to go through this and answer the questions. Okay, what genre would describe the performance? I'm not sure. I guess, is stylized a genre? I don't know. I'm gonna write it down anyway, because it was. Are the names of the main actors? I don't know. I don't know what the names of the main actors are. I don't know the names of the actors, so I'm gonna have to find that out. It, a bit weird. Does the play have a main character, a protagonist? Yes. Oscar. The, the weird thing about Oscar, I don't know if I can write him as a protagonist because he was kind of, he wasn't an antagonist, but he wasn't very positive. And we were all discussing this in the car on the way back to school, like, we didn't see him as a positive figure. And I don't know whether that was because of his, like, he wasn't physically violent, but there was this whole thing, like, at the end of Act 1 and it carried on where he was, like, banging his drum and everyone would start, like, screaming and the windows broke and stuff. Um, so it wasn't he was like a violent character. Describe how one of the characters uses their voice and movement to portray their character. Okay, so I think for this one I'm gonna have to go with the narrator because that was like, he was the central, well, no, actually, I, knew, I, I completely forgot about this. I said the narrator didn't have a name, the narrator was Oscar. Spoiler, massive spoiler. He was dressed in like the same outfit as Oscar, but you wouldn't have known. I think you had the suspicion, it wasn't like, whoa, plot twist, mind blown, but it was like, it wasn't exactly, a secret but it wasn't something that you would really they didn't draw attention to it until the end um and he was the one who like did all the yelling and the background noise I, I again i just threw my pen i don't know exactly what i would call that but it was definitely use of voice and it was effective there was a lot of bits where they were singing um and he would sing a different part and it was kind of like i guess excluding him from the rest of them, therefore excluding Oscar from the rest of them, if you get what I mean. If there was any other character, I totally understand why they had like two, two versions of him, because it was like past and future, but if he can't grow, surely he stays the same. I don't know. Again, I'm probably missing something from the plot here that I just don't understand, because it was very confusing, and I saw it like weeks ago, so if I'm completely wrong, sorry, but again, I don't know. Describe a key moment. I'm gonna have to talk about the end of Act 1. I don't know what this is about, I feel like I've missed something here. Again, I won't go on about this, but probably just the book. Every time he hit his drum, it had like this weird power over everyone. And I could get really deep into the metaphorical meaning of this, but I won't. I'll just let you think about it. But I did a lot of thinking about it and it was like 
existential crisis. Um, but yeah, every time he hit this drum, like everyone freaked out. And bear in mind, he's like a three year old when he first gets the drum. And the fact that he can't grow, it's like eternal youth kind of kind of idea anyway. Everyone starts screaming and like, it's so loud. Like, I'm not joking. I've written here like crazy loud, rest in peace my ears. And at this point, these curtains came down from the sides um, with eyes on and it was like red and black and white and we all said like I mean the people in my class We think it represents like the Nazis. We were discussing We didn't know whether they used that because they felt wrong using the Nazi symbol or whether it was because um, They actually wanted an impact and we said like Me and my friend said it might be to do with like the fact that Oscar was watching like all the events that went on like the eye um, but it definitely had that same effect. So these curtains came down at the sides. Like I've I've drawn a, a, a beautiful drawing here, artistic. That was on the armbands and the curtain. So it was black, red, white, black. So it was the same colours as the Nazi symbol. So you can kind of like get that. And then they I've written here. What have I written about it? The ensemble started dancing to the drum. So it's like this kind of, as well as all the noise, they were all dancing and like doing this sort of weird hypnotic movements. And the narrator was singing and it was so loud and then Oscar screamed and the windows, because there were windows like, there was a balcony, um, I've drawn it actually, let me show you. Not a very good drawing but I don't know how well you can see that either. There was um, windows at the top with tracing paper in them, a balcony and then the chandelier which I was talking about crashed on the bottom of the stage. It's like two levels and then stairs that were there. Apparently that's my attempt at drawing stairs. I don't know. But yeah, that um, that was basically the set. And they punched like loads of holes in this tracing paper. Um, and they were all screaming and then the bottom window smashed. And also, I haven't written about this. Oh yeah, I have. Never mind. There was this woman stood at the top next to the windows with like a wig, like a blonde chin length wig. Um, like shouting and screaming and singing. I heard someone in the toilet compare her to Lady Gaga. You get the picture. My drama teacher thinks that she represents like Hitler. Uh, yeah. Apparently I've written about some paper chain doll chains. Yeah, I can't remember what that was about, but I remember that being cool. There was like people the ensemble were holding these paper chains and then they like broke or something. I, I can't remember. Yeah. I think that's everything I have to say really because I didn't really make notes in the second half. Um, as you can see, a lot happened in the first half. Overall, I think, what what else have we got here? What did you think? Uh, I think I would have given it a 4 out of 5, which is high for me. I can't remember what I gave Jane Eyre, but it was probably something along those lines. Not a 5, because, not a 4 and a half, because I didn't get the plot, but I will say it again, I don't know what that was down to, but I didn't really get it. But apart from that, it was really good. I don't know where it is now, uh, I will find out for you if it's still going. I think it's still going. And I will leave the links below, or like write it on the screen somewhere here. So if it's floating around my head, that's it. Yeah, cool. I would recommend going to see it. It's cool. You will enjoy it. If you want to you think, you want to do some thinking, that's, that's the play for you. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you soon for a new video. Bye!